Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Mod Showcase video. Now I'm very excited to show you this because this is a, another creation from the people who created the Nanobot Build and Repair System, which is a mod that I've used so much in survival mode because it's so useful. If you do not know what that mod is, it's essentially like an extra pair of hands where whatever block you place down, that thing will take the materials out of your storage and will magically start welding it up until it's complete. You can use it as a battle repair system, you could use it just to help you build large bases, so you just put down all the unfinished blocks, and yeah, it's just generally a brilliant little mod to have. And they've come out with this, which is called the Nanobot Drill and Fill. Sounds a little obscene, but it works in the exact same way as the build and repair system, except it's for collecting ore. So this giant thing behind me, this thing right here, is the drill and fill. It's a specialised drill that does not need to be pointing in the direction that you want to drill in, you just have to place it somewhere, and as long as it's in range, it will try and do what you ask it. So I just come over to here and just open up, there it is. This is its range on a large block grid. Sorry if this hurts your eyes, because it's hurting my eyes. Basically, if you tell it to collect ore, tell it to collect stone, ice or whatever, it will attempt to drill from this area right here. Just like the builder repair system, you can edit it and move this box around so you can drill in other places. Yes, I'll come back to that in just a minute. So let me just disable that and we'll go over the cost. So once you've added this into your world, you'll be able to just search here for the drill system and you'll be good to go. It requires 40 motors, 20 computers, 10 large steel tubes, 60 small steel tubes, 25 interior plates, 140 construction components and 52 steel plates. So it's a very cheap thing to do and you can get this up and running very early in a survival mode which is damn useful if you do, because it'll save you a lot of hassle going backwards and forwards mining that stone. So this is what we get when we spawn it in, it's a custom block with some really nice textures. We've got a small almost cargo container like block down here which comes up into these little tubes which are almost like a rocket pod on there, then we come all the way up to the top, got a little hollow part in there. So if I just come into the options now, I'll show you what we can do with this. So it's a very simple block, if you use the build and repair system then you're going to be right at home with this block because it's essentially the same. So over here, our first main option is to change the work mode. On the build and repair system we would have walk mode, fly mode, but on here we have three which relate to the task at hand. So we've got collect, now collect is going to be the main option that you will generally be using because this is going to be targeted drilling, it's going to go for whatever you have on this list right below it. These are your drill priority list and whatever you enable, whatever you disable will depend on what it's going to collect. So say if I was to disable cobalt, it will now only go for these types of resources, it'll try and go for gold first, then ice, then iron, then magnesium, nickel, platinum and so on and so forth. If I was to say enable that, disable the ice and then disable the stone, turn this on, it's not going to collect anything because there is no resource in the general area that's on that list. If I was to come back over to it and come to control panel, there we go and say enable stone, I only want stone from this area, it will turn on and it will attempt to actually go after it. There we go, it took a little delay and now it's going to start collecting stone from the general vicinity. But I'm now just going to turn this off, because I do not wish it to do that. And that was the stone it collected. It collected quite a lot of stone in a short amount of time. So the other setting for this one is drill. Now drill is basically the traditional drilling that we all know and have got used to in Space Engineers, where we'll simply just go and drill everything in the general area. So if I was to enable that, it would still abide by this list over here, so it would still go like that, but anything you disable, anything like ice, it will just create a floating object instead of collecting it. It will just still drill out the area, but it will only collect the stuff you want, and there we go. It's now just creating floating objects of ice, because I do not want it. So that will keep on going until the actual area itself that can be predefined down here, has been all mined out. And speaking of this area, let me just turn this off so it doesn't make any noise. 
we do have a fair few options, much like the build and repair system, where we can change the horizontal. Whoopsie, it's very sensitive, and we've got a lot of range actually on this. We could do some really sneaky mining with this thing. Then we've got the vertical. Then we've got the forwards. Then we've got the area width, the height, and the depth. So just coming back up to here, because there is some really fancy stuff we can be doing with this. Just got to touch on the fill setting. Now, not really going to be using this. It's a nice to have, but it is a little bit weird. What this will do is take out the resources that you've collected and will try and fill in this area around you. So it'll just fill in this black square with whatever resource you have selected. So what I've done over here is basically left this one running. One of them is collecting ice. The other one is trying to fill in the area, and this is what it's doing. It's just going to attempt to fill in that square as best it can, and this one is just going to mine as much as possible. It's making a nice ramp there. Very nice ramp. But that will just keep on going like that, and that is simply the fill option. If I was to come into this, so this is the one filling. Just come over to here. We can select the item for filling, so... If I want to fill this area up with stone, it'll then take all the stone out of your cargo container or whatever. If I select it to ice, it'll then use the ice and try and fill it up. And then we've got grass, stone and everything else for the other planets. So there's that. Not really much use, but if you wanted to, say, encase your base in stone, you could do that. Perhaps make yourself a little cave to play around with. Now for the next thing on the list, we've talked about the drilling, we talked about the collecting, we've got the priority list of what we do and don't want, we've got the filling list, we then have the collection settings. Now this is for collecting floating objects, so I'm just going to switch this on and it will start creating a load of floating objects. So what I've done for the next thing is told it to go and start mining the surrounding area but not collect it, so now we've got a bunch of uncollected ice just floating around. If I was to come back into the control panel and scroll down to here, in our collection settings, I can now tick the collect only if idle. So if it's not going to do any drilling, if it's not doing any filling, you can tick this and it will start collecting up all the other resource around it. So it's now going to start collecting up all that ice and jam it inside itself. But it can't because it's almost full, so there it is slowly going up. So it's a nice thing to have. So if you accidentally got rid of ice and say you actually needed ice, you can then just go and make it automatically collect. Although you could just use the build and repair system to go and collect all that up for you. So now I'm just going to come and turn that off because we do not need that. We've talked about the area settings and how we can change it. But now we come down to here where we've got remote controlled by. Yeah, so it's select if the center of the working area should follow a character as long as you're inside the maximum range. So if I wanted it to say, go and start drilling some ice. So I want you to, in fact, collect ice. And I want you to, yep, enable that. But I want it to follow me. So this area is just going to follow me and it should hopefully start drilling where my character is walking. There we are, we can see it's sort of trying to stalk me over to here. It's going to start drilling under the ground for some odd reason. Yeah, it's going to start drilling underneath me. There it is starting at that corner. And now it's going to slowly start drilling out this area around my character. So it's a nice way of making a more targeted drilling. You could just lower this area, say you just want to take out a nice lump of uranium. Just tell it to follow your character and just go and walk onto it and it will just drill that area for you just so you don't have to fiddle around with the actual ranges yourself and try and get it to line up to where you want it to drill. So we've got these lovely options right down here. Control show area means that if we tick this box we will get the giant black cube showing us while we have a drill in our hand. So I tick that box and then come off it then just take out my drill We'll then get the black box and it will follow me around because I've told it to target my location. So if I just put my drill away, that will go away. Then the option below it is sort of the same except that while you've got a drill in your hand then the machine will start up and start drilling. So if you don't want it to drill unless you have a drill in your hand, that is how you'll do it. And then we have a lovely option below that which I highly recommend turning all the way down is the volume control. So putting it all the way up, we get this awful rumbling sounds, but we can turn it all the way down 
so we don't hear a thing. And then last but not least, we got controlled by a script, but you don't need to touch that. So we can put this onto a large ship and just fly around and target mine anything we want. We can connect this up to a much larger system. So if I was to say spawn in some cargo containers, so like that. And then I could put maybe a few of these on top. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to pile them up like this. I want them to collect absolutely everything. So all of these are going to be switched on and they're all going to have their sound turned off. They are all going to drill the area out. And that'll do quite nicely. Now having these do have a little tiny performance impact, much like the build and repair system, so you can't go overboard with them. I generally recommend only maybe one or two per ship, or maybe one or two per base, just to try and hold out on performance. If you're playing a non-dedicated server in multiplayer, then I really would limit two per player, because the build and repair systems do take their toll when they're all active. But that about covers the drill and fill mods. It's absolutely fantastic, and these lot are doing well, building their little wall of ice and drilling. Actually, hold on a minute, that's illegal. Fuck to a ship. Wow. They have quite some force behind them if you change them to a ship. But yes, they did a brilliant job of filling in that area of ice and digging out the area. And these lot are still going, but I think they've just filled up everything. Yes, they have. So I could give them a large cargo container as one final thing. So where's the large cargo container? Slap it up over here. There we go. Find the conveyors. It will do. And they should get back to work. So with six of them running, I've left it a few seconds there. Bloody hell, they've collected almost 600k ice. So yeah, they do collect quite a lot. So yeah, like I said, one or two would be good. Now I did forget to mention that you can get a small version of this drill. So if I was to plop this down right here, these are the small ship drills. They're basically the same, except they've got a small connector on and a much smaller body. There we go. It's now going to start taking away this ice, so small ship, large ship, it's a bloody brilliant mod. So it'll be in the description below if you wish to download and play around with this mod. I highly recommend you do because these things are bloody fantastic to use in survival mode. One of these and one builder repair systems is going to make your life a hell of a lot easier and will make the game generally more fun than spending all that time collecting up stone when you're first starting out building your first base or your first large ship until you can get a proper drill system up and running. But as for that, thank you all for watching and I'll be back with another showcase video some point soon. Bye bye.